Hey you guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you a couple of new additions that I have to the collection. And um, a couple of days ago, one of my friends came by and she surprised me with some new additions. So some of my friends, they got together and they put together a, a couple of orchids to give to me for my birthday. It's on Monday, so I got a nice uh, surprise early birthday gift from them. And a lot of these, I feel like they know me very well. They're right up my alley. They're orchids that that I like, and I can't wait to show you them. So this is going to be a quick video. I'm going to show you what I have, and I'm going to be repotting them real quick. Um, I'm going to be up-potting one of them, and I'll see how the other one looks, and we'll see if we'll up-pot that or just let it be. But I hope you guys enjoy. So the first orchid that I got is the BC, the Brassocatlia Rustic Spots. So this is a Richard Mueller hybrid, and those of you who know me know that I love these. This is a really nice looking healthy orchid. It's got a nice root system here. We have a nice new growth here coming in, and it looks like this is probably going to be able to bloom. Maybe not off this growth, but maybe off the next one. I find that Richard Mueller hybrids tend to bloom quite young. Um, they are, they're lovely orchids. They're just so vigorous. But this one is a cross between the Richard Mueller and the Cattleya Lindate. I'm not as familiar with the Cattleya Lindate, but I have about a dozen Richard Mueller hybrids and I just love all of them. Some of them stay a little bit small. Some of them get a little bit bigger. Um, my Cattleya Triumphans and uh, Richard Mueller Hybrid, that one is my only like really big hybrid. But I have the Mark Jones Cross, which is really nice and it stays pretty small. And this one now, so I'm so excited. So I'm going to be up potting this. The next orchid that I have, I'm really excited for this one. So it is the actual Richard Mueller parent. So this is the parent of all of the orchids. This is what keeps everything so, so compact and small and gives it that vigor. So this one is a cross between the Brassava linidosa, crossed with the Lelia millery. And I made a video on this that you guys could check out right here. But I just love these hybrids. They're so cute and I'm so happy to have an actual Richard Mueller in my collection finally. I don't have this. It's apparent to a dozen of my orchids. So it's gonna be really cool to be able to grow this one and see how it turns out when it blooms and see exactly what it looks like because there's so much variation on these and it's pretty cool. So I'm excited about this. Okay, there's one more that I'm going to show you guys. So this next one is the Brassavola and Adosa. So I have a division from my friend's orchid. She, um, she knows that I have the little stars, but I don't have the Brassavola and Adosa. So she gave me a division. So I'm going to be potting it up. I've had it for a few days, so it's a little dehydrated. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I'm going to make sure it's hydrated, well potted up, and um, I'm going to add it to my collection. So thank you so much. So I want to thank my friends Grismelda, I want to thank Maria, I want to thank Vin, and I want to thank Lindsay for these wonderful orchids. Um, funny enough, um, my friend Grismelda was telling me they wanted to send me more and she had to fight them because I'm always fighting about not having enough room in my collection. I'm always trying to downsize my collection, so when I get more, I'm like, no more! <laughs> but these are so perfect. It's it's three more compact orchids, so you could always make room for three. Um, but I found it so funny. Um, she was telling me like they wanted to send me more, and she was like, no, you guys don't know Nicole. Like She's literally busting at the seams, and it's true. <laughs> It's not that I'm busting at the seams because I keep getting more orchids. I've been more disciplined about that. Is that I'm busting out at the seams because my orchids are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you'd think that, like, 
You think that these orchids will stay kind of small, but some of them actually get quite large, especially the dendrobium. So I'm going from three inch pots to five inch pots to six inch pots, and I have some in seven inch pots, especially my cattleyas, and I'm, yeah, they, do, they grow up on you. <laughs> I look forward to growing these. I really appreciate them, and I'm gonna be repotting them with you guys. So we're gonna start with the Brasso Cattleya Rustic Spots. I think I wanna up pot it. Normally I don't repot so soon, but in my environment, I like to get a little moss in the mix so that it can retain more moisture. And I find that just bark tends to dry out very quickly for me. So I have a couple of pots here. We'll see what fits best and we'll go from there. So I'm just gonna take this, get it out of the pot and let's see what's going on in here. It's so vigorous. Hopefully it comes out all right from this spot. Let's see. This is the hardest part sometimes, getting it out of the pot. Okay, this is okay. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna wrap around it. Okay, some of these broke and that's okay. But this looks like a really good root system. I'm not gonna disturb it. I'm just gonna add a little moss in there so it can retain a little bit more moisture and we'll go from there. We'll deal with it next time. Cattleyas can be sensitive sometimes. Richard Mueller hybrids are very vigorous, but I don't mind leaving this in the original bark. This is in good shape. It's not broken down. It's totally fine. I'm just gonna put a little moss in there and have some more bark here, which we'll add in around, the, around here. And then you do want to keep in mind that this orchid is growing in that direction. So we're going to take the actual orchid and move it to the edge. That way it can continue growing here probably for the next year. So next year I will repot it and give it some fresh media. And I'm going to add a little bit more moss, not a ton, a little goes a long way with these repots, but it helps maintain the moisture in there. I'm so excited for this one. I love Richard Mueller hybrids. They're just so vigorous, so beautiful. You guys will never hear me stop talking about them. This is so cute. So we got some moisture that'll stay in there. We got a little bark in here. So I've changed a lot with repotting. Um, so when I first started uh, growing orchids more seriously, I used to repot everything in the beginning. And now I'm just like, hmm, if it's not broken down, there's no need to change anything. It tends to, some of the media tends to last longer than you think, but some of it breaks down faster. Like sphagnum moss, uh, you really can't get more than a year or two out of it sometimes. So that you have to stay on top of, but bark and leca, um, that tends to last quite a while. So I'm pleased with this. This should be pretty good for the next year. And this will continue growing on this side. So the rustic spots is all set. Alrighty, let's move on to this Richard Mueller. And apologies for the dog out there, it just won't stop barking. So I have this, I think this is a four inch pot and I have this smaller two and a half inch pot. So I think I'm gonna put it in the two and a half inch pot. You never wanna go to a pot that's too big or it's gonna hold too much moisture. This is just a little bigger and my intention is just to get some moss in there so I can keep up with the watering. So let's get it out of this pot. I'm so excited about this. I don't even want to disturb this root system. It's so young. I'm going to just let it be. This looks pretty good. Let's see if we can focus here. Yeah, this looks good. This is a very young orchid. I'm not even going to touch anything in there. I'm just going to put it into a moss bark setup that's a little more airy. So we're going to put some moss at the bottom. Keep it airy. Get some bark in here. And then we're gonna get around this. This is an easy repot. We're not cutting anything. We're gonna take a little more moss. You can see some new roots popping in there as well. You see why I didn't wanna disturb it? We don't wanna break any of those roots. So we're gonna get this moss here. Hold a little more moisture. A little goes a long way. 
It also depends on your climate. This may not work for everyone. I get a lot of comments from folks in Florida that have trouble with rot in their orchids. And in that case, I advise that you check out what works better for you. And moss is probably not it if you're prone to rotting, but maybe um, mounting or bark, just bark is good. But for me, this tends to work out well for my cattleyas. And notice, the pot is small, so the smaller the pot, the quicker it can dry. So this will be fine. It'll hold enough moisture, but it'll dry out quickly enough where I won't have any issues in keeping up with it. We're gonna put this in here. And normally you don't press down, but I am just to firm it in there. I'm not gonna use a support stake or anything. This is so small. We're gonna let it be. So this is good. It'll hold a little bit more moisture and should grow nicely. Look at that nice new growth here. I'm excited and look at those new growths coming in there. I can't wait to see this bloom one day. So Richard Mueller is all set. All right, up last we have the Brassavola nidosa. This is a division from my friend's plant. I'm gonna leave the roots here. I just want it to feel like it's anchored in there. And this is more of a welcome to my collection repot versus like cleaning everything up. Um, so it's gonna get used to the new media that I use and stuff like that. So I'll take care of getting rid of anything old later on, just because it does have good viable roots, but I also want it to anchor down. So I don't wanna cut everything out. So let's see, what kind of pot are we gonna use? We could use this pot, which is a little smaller. I think that'll do actually. Like, yeah, this will be totally fine. Yeah, that's perfect. If we use this other pot, it's gonna be too big and it's gonna hold too much moisture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some moss again, put it at the bottom. We're gonna take some bark, throw it in there. I have the bark right next to me. This is the, um, Pine bark from Sunset Valley Orchids. And yeah, we're gonna throw this in here. I'm keeping it nice and simple. As I said, this is like more of a welcome to my collection repot versus like let's thoroughly clean everything up or chop anything. I've been more gentle. I feel like the longer you're growing, the less fussy you are about things. And in the beginning, you wanna do everything at once. You're adjusting pH in your water. It's like you go a little overboard in the beginning. Um, as of late, I haven't been adjusting the pH in my water because I've been moving a lot of my orchids back to organic. So I don't have to, I still have orchids in semi-hydro because they're still growing in there and they have room. But I'm finding that they're growing just fine with my water. But you get like a nerd sometimes when you're beginning and you start doing all these things that they do really help your orchids thrive. But then when you've been growing for a while and if you have like good tap water, you start abandoning some of that extra stuff. <laughs> all right, we're gonna top this off with more bark and this should be perfect. This is gonna drain pretty well, but hold decent moisture and we are good to go. These orchids are all done. I'm so excited to see them grow up. They're always going to be special to me because they were gifted to me. So I can't wait to see them bloom. This is probably going to be the first one to bloom. The rustic spots. The um, Richard Mueller itself, it looks like it's a couple of years from blooming, but I'm going to take such good care of it to make sure that it, um, it thrives in my care. And I can't wait to see it. And the Brassavola nidosa, I don't have that one, I have the little stars. I'm sure this one's gonna get really big. It's a little dehydrated, that's my fault. Um, I left it bare root for quite a few days, but um, it should plump back up now that it has adequate media and I'm gonna be watering it and making sure that it is um, watered once it's dry. You don't have to overwater these, but you also can't leave it parched like I did. And remember when I said that my collection is uh, basically busting at the seams because things get big. Let me actually show you my little stars, which I got about this size, maybe a little smaller. So here's my little stars. This is a hybrid with the Brassavola nodosa. They have a very similar flower, except the other one is a species. So this one I have for three years and it was about the size, maybe a little smaller than the Brassavola nodosa now. So yeah, when you get orchids, 
you just got to remember they get bigger on you but also you get way more flowers and this has been in bloom for about two months sadly my cat has been eating some of this so it is what it is but you get really nice shows and the blooms just get more abundant over time this was another one that i just up potted a couple of months ago and it was definitely worth it anyway guys thank you so much for watching i'm so happy with my my new orchids my birthday orchids and i cannot wait to see them bloom so i want to thank my friends for these thank you so much and i will see you guys in the next video bye everyone